Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called By the Lake. It's a three and a half by five. And I painted this, I don't know, a couple days ago, maybe oh, three, four days ago. Well, today is uh, October 19th. It's a Wednesday, pretty nice day out here, a little bit of rain and stuff, but you know, no complaints. I have, uh, what, well, let's talk about what we're doing first, because you want facts, you want data. We're painting on a bit of um, MDF. I have a bunch of little MDF boards uh, cut to this size, and I'm getting things ready for the uh, Artisans uh, Fair out here, the Artisans Market, the weekly market I'll be at every Saturday. and. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that the minis will strike a chord with people. I've seen that in my studio with the tourists, but uh, we're not seeing a lot of the uh, El Turisto these days uh, due to, you know, the unknown uh, virus of unspecified origin messing all that up. But no complaints. It's another beautiful day and I'm uh, going to do some painting and uh, what else can you say? You know, I uh, just got to keep going. And, um,. So I have painted this scene before. Uh, oh, now, oh, I want to talk about my prep on this uh, MDF here. So I have, I think, a pretty cool little strategy now. You can see it looks kind of organic and interesting um, texture. It's actually very smooth, but um, so what I've been doing is just priming all the boards with transparent gesso. The color of MDF is like a, a, a tail, uh, a tannish cream color. And... Um, Uh, so what I've been doing is just like uh, normally I would have got a roller out and uh, I mixed a little bit of uh, acrylic paint with some uh, transparent gesso and rolled that out and that's a, a pain because you feel like you want to do a bunch of different boards you know and um, you got to clean the roller and but what I've been doing though is just putting a couple different daubs of paint on um, on my palette and uh, and adding a little bit of the transparent gesso and then just applying it with a paper towel and uh, that's what's giving that interesting effect and uh, uh, last time I did I mean I did quite a few of these little umbery ones um, but I can do just one or two uh, in a, a nicer brighter color I've been doing that on some of my my nudes which I uh, don't really feature on this channel I can see a link to my nude channel um, down below this video check it out um, I'm not that uh, I actually I had tons of them I, I, I just don't usually bother to, to put up on the uh, internet but I'd like to get back into doing more of that and the ones that are there are very cool so go check it out and leave me a comment there no one ever comments there I don't know why um, anyway uh, this scene I've painted before it's based on a um, I think pretty pretty well-known pictorialist photo uh, I'm going to butcher this guy's name. It's French. It's Leonard Mission. 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 Uh, very, you know, if you look into pictorialism at all, you'll you'll know this guy. And if you don't know what pictorialism is, uh, I'll be happy to give you a quick pressy there. And what it is, is a, um, a movement in photography, say the turn of the 20th century, um, around there, um, say up to like 1910, 20, and it was a very painterly approach to photography. So people would take pictures that were slightly out of focus. Uh, they would uh, sometimes um, press the plate into paper um, to get a print, you know. Um, a bunch of things that I don't know much about because I'm not that uh, interested in photography other than as a means uh to an end of, of getting reference for my painting. Um, but I do love pictorialism and I love the, it's very much a sister movement with tonalism. It has a lot of the same um, poetic motivations behind it. It's a dreamy, often a dreamy quality, um, a, a strong reliance on good uh, compositions with good contrast, uh, I would say. Also a simplification of form. Um, and a tonal or texture quality, uh, both a tonal and a textural quality. Um, in some cases, uh, this would have been provided by the paper that the the prints were made on. And um, 
you know, I have actually looked pretty deeply into pictorialism, but the technical aspects I, I'm not that interested in, so I can't give you much um, there, you know. Um, but uh, definitely, if you uh, are interested in, like, this sort of feeling or whatever, uh, just type uh, pictorialism into, um, well, go to Yandex, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm over it with the old, uh, the big G. Um, and actually, their image search has not been that great lately. Uh, whereas I'm finding all sorts of things on Yandex that are being filtered out. Um, type pictorialism there and go to town. Also, uh, like, um, I want to say Tumblr. I found some things on Tumblr. Uh, Tumblr used to be pretty cool. It's pretty much a ghost town now. Uh, even uh, Flickr, which is the same thing, used to be pretty cool. Pretty much, yeah, not that. I don't know. Maybe there's still people into it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I only have so much time. And that's uh, that's something, too. Maybe we could talk a little bit about it. You only have so much time as well. And I really appreciate you taking some of it to watch me put a little painting together. Um, the other thing I may want to talk to you about is like this is a very limited uh, color palette. Now that uh, mixing of the basic color palette would be in the members area as, uh, as well as a good view of the reference image that I used for inspiration for the painting. So if those are things that you uh, would really like to know more about, um, you know, pull out six bucks and throw it at Google and they're going to give me half of it and, uh, and then you'll have ready access to over 200 videos where most for the most part I'm sharing that uh, the reference and the color mixing um, but I uh, yeah, appreciate you too just spending some time with me here so let's talk about um, the colors I use mostly uh, yeah we did lean into Mike's green which is the acrylide yellow with a little bit of black um, uh, obviously the um, underpainting was done with burn umber and some black um, and then in the sky, uh, there is no actual blue. All of the colors that seem to be bluish are gray. And actually to emphasize that, I, I mix in a bit of raw umber. So raw umber, yellow ochre, in the, in the light areas, yellow ochre, probably some of that titanium buff, which is the color buff is before it's bleached, if you didn't know. That's pretty neat and um, quite, quite a useful color. Um, Raw umber, uh, burn umber, uh, titanium buff, titanium, uh, ivory black, and that acrylic yellow would be all the base constituent colors. I may have got into a little bit, I think, you see there's kind of that in the part of the tree, some, oh yeah, we're getting some oranges, so cat orange, and cat orange, a uh, very useful color, a um, bit of burnt sienna, you know. Um, cat orange mix of the greens is very nice for light greens. Uh, even a little bit of cad red because I was trying to push things redder. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I got this kind of like sort of interesting little compositional abstraction going and that was one of the things that uh, I really love about doing the minis is that it puts a strong emphasis on the abstract, more abstract elements. I mean, you could get out your tiny brushes and your magnifying glass and start going to town on, you know, uh, painting little teensy details in a teensy way. Um, but I prefer to use a brush. You know, that's a two that I'm using right there in the sky. And for most of the landforms, I was using like a one or a zero. Um, yeah, I like I like the abstract feel. I like to actually I followed through on that with a uh, simplification of the colors. I had a bit more colors in the um, the reference image. I know that's another thing maybe we chat about. So the reference image was of course a sepia toned photo, but I played with the new um, they have these neural filters in Photoshop that are kind of good. Um, there's one called Colorize that you can use for colorizing old photos or any photo I imagine it's quite unimaginative you know it will but it does it uses AI to identify that trees are green and skies are blue um, and that grass can be orange or yellow or ochre it does that and so in that way it can be quite a, bit a time saver you know the way that they used to colorize these photos in the old days was that you would be basically using something like oil paint <clears throat> to do glazes right over the top of the actual photo right 
Well, I think it was oil paint, but it could have been some other paint. I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. Um, but you can do the similar sort of thing in Photoshop. If you load up a, uh, a black and white photo, you can apply colors using just the hue aspect of the color. It doesn't change the value um, assignments of the image. So um, you can colorize things that way. And uh, you could get quite involved with it. Um, I, uh, you know, would find that pretty boring. I don't mind spending some time, though, I will say, um, messing around with my images in Photoshop. Um, because at the end of the day, it's about imagination. It's about inspiration. Um, and what you're putting in front of yourself before you start painting is pretty important, you know. And some people like to go outdoors and do the plein air. Um, it doesn't really work that well for me. Uh, weather here is kind of... In fact, today I left the house. It was sunny. I took my bike. And then the rain clouds came out. And then a half hour later it's sunny again, which is... I guess that's island living. I live in the North Island in uh, New Zealand. So, in spite of the American accent. If you want to know the tale, let me know. I'll, 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 I'll spill it on some video here. But... Uh, Suffice to say, I'm an expat living in New Zealand, yeah, with changeable weather. So plein air painting is not really a thing for me. I don't like the, um, ooh, well, I do, I, t I tell you what I do like is like the throes of battle. I mean, I can see why people like plein air painting because you've got like, you're overwhelmed with data. You're coming in and you've got to um, consolidate it and get it onto the canvas and move pretty quick too because the light's shifting. <clears throat> but I like to approximate some of these processes using my uh, digital means and my imagination um, all together. And uh, the imagination is very much an active part of the digital manipulations, really. Um, so, um, and if I can use a AI tool like um, Colorize, um, I will. And I did. And it gave me some good ideas. And so... Um, uh, I'm real happy with the way this turned out, and and in the uh, the members area video, it has almost a nocturnish feel to it. Um, so it's not an outright nocturne, but I I treated it like it it was. You know, I mean, I, I'm in this kind of odd little color space in this painting, um, and I did another sort of nocturne that was based on an old um, old master's uh, sort of nocturne. Um, which I haven't shared on the channel yet. I just kind of like this one, so I thought I'd pop it up. I'm trying to get back to two videos a week. I'm trying to space things out so I don't actually skunk the views on one of the videos or the other. Um, although, you know, at the end of the day, there, there's seven, eight hundred, I don't know how many videos. I, YouTube doesn't make it easy to figure that out. Um, I don't know how many videos there are on the channel. <laughs> Um, between the live and the these ones, like these 15-minute ones, it's got to be cracking 800, maybe more. Don't know. A lot, though. And so people, some of the most popular videos on the channel at any given month are videos that are years old because, um, you know, views propagate views. Um, I will say, by the way, if you've got this far in the video, you're really helping the channel out because um, getting to the end of the video apparently is something that the... AI algorithm for YouTube really likes and so they will we'll put this in front of people over on the side there and um, and maybe they'll come and watch it and maybe they go wow I just love this guy's rap I love the stuff he has to say I'm getting so much from this it's so entertaining watching a little image come together I think it is irregardless of uh, or regardless irregardless is not a word I know uh, but regardless of the things I say um, while you're watching the video I think it's so valuable just to see a little painting come together. And I, I love to talk about uh, my inspirations and my process and, uh, you know, the things like the colors used. I know a lot of people like that, too, so I try and get it all in there. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. And if you have the ability to support me in any way um, through a direct donation on my site, someone gave me one last week. It was so awesome. Thank you so much if that was you. I really, I, your email, I couldn't say thank you, so it didn't, it wasn't a valid uh, email for my server or something. Anyway, anyway, you can find, uh, go buy a painting. I would love that. 
but anything you can do to help me out, if you can help me out, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Take good care. Stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family.